Hi everyone, welcome back to episode 8 of the Canary Room. Uh, we'll start the show again outside, it's a beautiful spring morning. And you'll notice that I have my uh, post-lockdown trim. So, um, my hair was getting in my eyes, uh, largely because it kept falling out still. Um, before we start today, the usual thank yous, Mike Burling, Mike... Gent, thank you very much indeed for your donation. Uh, to Liz, also known as Birdie Birdie, thank you Liz. And to Derek Robertson too. Thanks Derek, much appreciated. Uh, if you're able to, on the homepage of the YouTube channel is a little uh, donation button. If you're able to make a donation to the channel, very, very much appreciated. Also a massive thanks to Ryan Wood and the Scottish Fife Canary Club. As you can see, I'm sporting some new attire, one of their gilets. If you look at their Facebook page, you'll be able to buy some merchandise. This fits the fuller figured man beautifully. Uh, so it's keeping me warm because it's still Baltic in the morning. Well, what have we got in store for you today? It's the usual features on the show. We'll catch up with the fives. We've got plenty of young fife out. The Norwich Notebook, which I know is fast becoming a favourite. Uh, the Native Diaries, lots of news in the Native Diaries, some new arrivals. Um, we've also got question time today and we'll wrap the show up with new coloured corner. There'll be a bird of the week too. I haven't decided which one it's going to be yet, uh, so we'll see how that goes. As always, grab yourself a cuppa, sit back and enjoy the show. Well, since you were last here, as always in the Canary Room, plenty has happened. Uh, we'll catch up with the Native Diaries shortly, but before we do, um, we'll check in with the Fifes. And it's been a, um, a an interesting couple of weeks. We've got a few flushes of nests that have come out, a um, couple of empty eggs. We, we've got some hens who've shown very little inclination in sitting, which is uh, which is always a little bit of a disappointment. But, you know, one of the things with the volume of hens that we've got in the canary room, certainly the five hens, we can move eggs around. Now, um, all bar one of the five hens has laid now. Uh, and um, those uh, that bird hasn't yet um, picked up any string, but I, I imagine it will do. Um, still plenty of time left in the season. Um, the first round I've been particularly kind of light touch with. So I've um, I've let birds have, you know, rear two. Um, I've, I've moved the odd thing around where maybe only one chick's hatched to make up a nest of three. I've done that on a couple of occasions. Canary keeping will always send you challenges. It will send you curveballs. And, you know, part of the challenge of the hobby is, is dealing with them. Um, I'd say I'd pulled my hair out on several occasions, but you'd all know that uh, that couldn't possibly be the case, although it was getting a little bit long and shaggy looking. The um, One of the, the, the challenges that I had, and, and it's unexplainable, and, and I've had a couple of people message me on, on both YouTube and Facebook with similar issues of hens seemingly fit, uh, and then the next minute um, just... You know, they go into the room and, and find them dead. And I had the similar situation with a with a, a clear yellow henbird in cage 15. Um, I'm I'm in and out of the room about four times a day, topping up the soak seed, topping up the egg food for the birds uh, because of all the young in the nest. And I'd, uh, in between feeds in the afternoon, I'd seen her there. She was sat on eggs um, and was in really good form. Uh, and then I came in a little bit later on and, and we can see I, I removed her from the cage. Um, that, that sadly, she passed. Uh, she was on four eggs. Um, you know, every, every cloud, really, I was able to move those eggs into two different nests. And I'm pleased to say that they have hatched. So although she's no longer with us, her legacy remains in the canary room and, and we've got four young, they're only probably seven days old now, so far too young to count as yet, but fingers crossed for them, they'll make it through. Um, we've had our first fifes leave the nest, uh, you can see a couple of shots of them here, they've come away in the last sort of 24 hours or so. Uh, you'll notice I've now put the pecking board in, 
Um, and what I will also do is, as well as the Pearl Morbide, which is in the egg food mix, uh, I'm also giving it to them straight. Uh, so I'm putting that as the finger draws, and I expect the young birds to, to sort of start to peck over that, but maybe not be too interested in it to start with um, but I'll give it to them there as a, you know an alternative source of food that will play a, a key role in in the weaning process weather in the UK has been crazy I think is the easiest way of describing it we've had um, really cold hard frosts in the morning and as a consequence of those cold cold hard frosts um, I think I've got a, a number of dead in shell. This weekend there was um, probably five or six nests due out. Uh, normally I'd anticipate a couple of uh, young chipping out early. Um, there's there's no sign off them as yet. Uh, I know those eggs were full, um, so we, we'll just have to you know just have to wait and see. But but all in. Fife wise it's not been um it's not been a bad first round you know i always think first round any any volume of birds that you've got and you know they're still very much babies um we may end up between 30 and 40 youngsters uh, from what would be the first round and, and that's a you know a decent number um for us here in the canary room i expect the second round uh, to be uh, as the birds come into to greater condition i expect that to be um, yield a, 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 a larger number of birds so um what i will do in the second round is is i'll start to actively manage the pairings a little bit more because although we talk about the breeding season and it's still being relatively early as we're in april and of course it is some people haven't put their young down yet and um, you know I really like to sort of put my last nest down in June. I don't want the breeding season to be going on into August. Um, you know, I really want young sort of out end of July, um, early August, and, and then get them through the molt. So um, really the next round is, is going to be the make or break round for the season as a whole. Um, you know, which sounds a, a, a little bit dramatic as I say it, but, you know, it, it, it really is. And so what I'll be doing is I'll be evaluating some of the youngsters that pop out of the nest uh, to see whether, you know, visually early on there where I want them to be. Um, and then that will influence what I do sort of next pair round. So very, very quickly, you know, the season moves from the start of the season into, into full steam. And full steam brings its challenges. Um, we can see here, this is a, an over year, four year old hen. Um, this hen, uh, although she's had plenty of, uh, of calcium, has um, has almost become sort of egg bound. Now she has passed two eggs. Um, you can still see there's a real swelling and I am giving her antibiotic treatment because I fear one of the eggs has broken inside her as we can see here um, from this footage. So I'm giving her some antibiotics. She is sat on eggs. Um, it's one of those challenges that we, you know, we just have to deal with. Um, in terms of the young, you know, we've got some really nice footage of, of uh, the blue hen here feeding uh, a nest of young, none of which are her own, um, but feeding a nest of a young two of these are from the clear yellow hen from cage 15 uh, another one in there i think and i say i think uh, is actually in a gap mosaic egg um so she's feeding them really really nice so you know so far with the fives we've uh, we we've we've had a good solid start and i, I would describe it as solid as opposed to spectacular and um, what's always interesting is the colors of the birds uh, and you know for me i you know the, the fife is a type canary color is incidental but i enjoy seeing the variety of different colors out so uh, so far i've rung clear birds i've rung cinnamon birds i've rung fawn birds i've rung blue birds green birds uh tick dan variegated birds so that's all uh, that all bodes well What's particularly interesting is the uh, the young from the fawn hen that I uh, I got from Gerald last year. Um, I've got three young from her. Um, she isn't. 
uh, she's only rearing one of them. Uh, she's got another uh, clear in there that isn't hers. And, uh, you know, you just see me messing around with the nest here, just lifting the chicks up just to show the breast feather. And that's a great way to determine the feather colour of young, particularly if you're thinking, you know, is it blue or is it a green? And you can see <clears throat> this is going to be a blue, and you can tell that because the, the, the chest feathers are kind of browny white. If it was a green, they'd be greeny yellow. Um, so looking forward to that. Uh, you know, it's a cinnamon carrier cock over a fawn hen. So, you know, there's a real variety, a real mix of birds that can be bred there. Um, she can breed visual uh, cocks and hens. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to seeing what's what, what goes on in there. And, and the rest of the fifes, you know, we, we've got a, a couple now who um, I'm starting to put the second round nest in as well. So with those guys, it's OK. It's... Uh, different-ish story in the Native Diaries. It's uh, an incredibly popular feature of the show, the Native Diaries. Um, and, you know, hopefully uh, will continue to be so. I, um, it's been a real, real up and down two weeks since we were last in the room. Um, so let's start with, with the positives, shall we? So the uh, bullfinch hen, uh, I use my endoscope cam here. Thanks to everyone who got in touch with me about the link for that. I have, I think, sent you all the link for it. Um, the uh, endoscope cam captures here bullfinch eggs. Um, these are from the, the pair of bullfinches um, and you can see here we've got the bullfinch hen on the nest. She's incubating five eggs. I've left them well alone. I don't know whether they're full or not, um, but fingers crossed they will be full. Um, the other bullfinch hen has also laid um, and what's been really encouraging, I think she's laid three eggs. Um, what's been really encouraging with her is I've seen the cock um, Norwich Canary feeding the on the nest. Now I did try and catch it on film. You can just through the ivy, you can just about make it out. So bullfinch on eggs, both bullfinches on eggs. As I say, I haven't checked them. Uh, I've just left them in. Um, some further good news in that the siskin hen has also laid and I've moved the uh, siskin cock as you can see here there's a, a mesh divider between the two siskin cocks can be um, really quite irritating uh, to the hens they can turf the eggs they try and drive the hens back to nest so I've separated them they've only been set a couple of days she's laid four um, so they've only been set a couple of days and, and you know we'll see we'll see whether they're full or not but we'll keep our fingers crossed for them um, with the goldfinch as well it's been um, it's been a really difficult couple of weeks uh, so first and foremost the um, satinette goldfinches the the hen laid and, and the cock turfed the, the eggs out, so I, I, I built a, a wire divider, I made a wire divider um, to go with, and, and then I was in the room and I was checking the nest, and the, the front nest pan's here, as you can see, um, and I was checking the nest, and I, uh, I'd shut the door of the room, and I thought I'd shut the door of the nest, and as I walked in the room, the, uh, I could see the birds were sort of a little bit sort of flighty and distracted and uh, I saw a white shimmer fly past my shoulder and out of the canary room door and that white shimmer was the satin neck goldfinch cock um, and well you can imagine um, sort of you know turmoil and um, frustration uh, upset uh, all, all, all in an instant. Um, I, um, he landed very close uh, in a bush, um, and then he proceeded to go down the side of the canary room. Now the canary room there's about a six-inch gap between the canary room and, and my back fence, and he managed to wedge himself right down there. Uh, couldn't get him. 
um, and in the end had to improvise and got the aviary net out and sort of a very, very long stick and wiggled it around a bit. And fortunately, he flew towards me and I was able to catch him and, and get him back in the cage. And I thought, wow, crisis averted. And, and then the, the two days later, I came into the room and I saw him mating the hen. He'd been singing his head off and I was, I'd separated the hen every night. Uh, and I thought, this is it. You know, we're going to get a real, a real strong clutch here uh, and they should all be fertile. And then I came in on the Saturday morning and I came into this. And you can see the hen here passed. No signs, no evidence, no egg stuck, no explanation. And that's, you know, hugely, hugely upsetting. Um, so, you know, if there's anyone watching the show and you've got a spare Siberian goldfinch hen that you're happy to sell, drop me a line and I'll... Uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll see if I can bring her in. Um, the only bit of good news is that I did manage to rescue one egg from her. That's currently under the Irish, and I have checked it this week, and it's full. Long way to go with it, but hopefully, you know, we might get one young out of her. Um, we've also got um, some eggs with the uh, red poles, the top pair at the top. They've laid a couple of eggs. We can see them here. Uh, she has missed the day, and there the cock's still very aggressive in chasing her. So I'm not convinced that, that they're going to be full at all. Um, and we have some new arrivals in the natives. So um, I had spoken to, been to see my good friend Alan Horry, and um, I'd sort of mentioned to him as he was sorting his birds. I said, you know, if you've got any. Um, of the uh, cobalt red poles. I'm really keen, really keen on the mal. So he uh, he gave me a ring and uh, I picked up a really, really nice pair of cobalt red poles. Now just out of shot, you can't see it, but just out of shot, I can see the hen with a, with a beak full of nesting material, which is a really, really good sign. Um, so I've got a pair of really nice cobalts. And then I've got a little experiment going on. Um, these you can see here, these are white wing cobalts. Now, um, the, the cock bird has got really sort of white tail uh, and white wings and, and the immediate reaction would be, ah, it's, it's a deficiency of some sort. Um, and, and that's a possibility, although if you see owls set up uh, and you understand that the, the sort of the mix of food um, uh, that owl gives them I find it hard to believe that it would be a deficiency and it's not evident in any of owls normal birds so um, I don't quite know you know whether these are a, a sort of new mutation who knows um, but I've got uh, I've got three of them so I've got a, a pair that I'm running together and then I've got a, a, a carrier um, a split pied cock that I'm running with one as well so we'll see you know they could be uh, a type of pied um, a type of pied cobalt Alan does breed in colonies and does have pied so it's a distinct possibility you might be able to tell out of shot here that there is uh, a couple of um, empty cages where the linnet was uh, and the and the Irish fancy and I made a decision um, as the weather really uh, certainly in the day has improved uh, I made a decision to pop them outside um, so I've got some lovely lovely shots here of the linnet cock and the Irish fancy outside in the flight in the flight's 10 foot there is a pair of greenies in there as well but they're not causing anyone any any bother at all so they're in the flight it's um yeah, it's lovely to see. Absolutely lovely to see. And I, I really, you know, as I see the natives in flights, it, it kind of, it makes me want to build flights in the garden. So, um, who knows? That could be the next Canary Room project. So, from here, the natives, let's go now to the Norwich Notebook. You may have seen in the last feature... Uh, the uh, the white Norwich and the clear buff Norwich here, you may have seen them breeding. Um, you may have seen them mating, and I have seen them a couple of times mating, which is really good. Uh, they spent a lot of time sitting in the nest pan, the hen did, so I do know it's a hen now, which is great. Um, 
and so I took the pan out in the end um, and, and I thought right I'll split them up so I split them up for a couple of days and then I reintroduced them so there's four Norwich hens here I have still got the green hen um, she's not looking in fantastic condition um, even though she's in the flight so we'll see if she comes good at the end of the year so there's a, a buff hen in here an over year buff hen in here her first round eggs were although we've seen them mated they were clear and it was you know probably to be expected this is the boy here the yellow cock that i got in from keith and um, he's running with both of these buff hens and um, i've seen him mate them both um, uh, and, and really good mate certainly with the hen up here um, and a good mating with the hen in here as well both of those hens have built in fact all four hens have built now which is a really really encouraging sign the young buff cock that I got off Gary that's um, I've seen that tread the uh, the hen up here as well so what I'm I'm really hopeful of is in the next sort of five to seven days the Norwich will start going down uh, and start laying eggs and the timing of that couldn't be better because as we'll see in the new colour corner in a, in a little while the um, the the new colours are, 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 are sort of at a really good stage with their first round so I'll be able to to float some of the Norwich eggs over there we do have a Norwich chick though, I am pleased to say. Um, we had uh, from the old buff cock, again from Gary and the yellow hen up there, uh, four of the eggs were full. Um, I checked them all, four of them were full. It looks like we've got one chick out at the moment. They were due yesterday, one hatched yesterday. Two look like they might still. One looks like it's it's a dead in shell and, it, and, it, and it's not gonna be viable, but we will see. Um, and what I'd have to do there, as I say, with hopefully I've got five, so I've got some uh, new colours due as well. So I won't leave it as a single chick. You know, I'll uh, I've got more nests due tomorrow. Hopefully they'll hatch. I will. Um, I'll I'll make a clutch up. Um, really, just just a piece of advice. You know, hens two two as a minimum. Otherwise, they get very bored, and, and I'd rather them rear three, to be honest. Um, so we'll we'll see with that. So Norwich Notebook is um, well, it's uh, yeah. So far, bit of, bit of good news. They're they're looking in really good form. They've been belting out in song, absolutely belting out in song, which has been incredible to uh, to watch. So fingers crossed, we'll have um, you know we'll have something positive to talk about with them in episodes to come. It's. Um, we mentioned him. He was a little bit of an escape artist. He's going to be this week's bird of the week. It is the Satinette Goldfinch Cock. If you've a mate out there for him, drop me a line. Drop me a line on Facebook. Drop me a line in the comments below. If you're UK based, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'd love, I'd love to get him a mate. Let's take a closer look at him now. I've popped him in a um, in uh, actually a Norwich show cage just to just to really sort of show him off. I didn't didn't want to put him in the normal British show cage that I put him in. He's he's a lovely bird, absolutely lovely. And you know if I can't get a mate for him, um, I'll have to uh, you know I, I maybe mule with him with the um, the yellow mosaic hen. But I'd I'd really want to breed um, straight goldfinches so it's a plea if you can help me please do um, uh, you know if you're able to help out I'll uh, you know I'm not looking for a freebie so if, if there is one available out there drop us a line but he is this week's bird of the week it is our satinette Siberian goldfinch cock The, um, the new colours have, have been something of a, a kind of revelation for me this year, certainly first round. And, you know, one of the things I would say to you all, birds will change from round to round. And that's something that's hugely frustrating with them. But the, um, 
the two pairs of grey wings and the pair of yellow mosaics have been incredible parents. The, the pair here of um, have reared four uh, and they just jumped the nest today. Um, the pair at the bottom, uh, which are mating as I speak, um, they've reared five, so that next round looks like it's going to be full as well. Um, they've reared five, which is great. Um, and hopefully, you know, next round, I'm, I'm starting now to put pans in for the second round as well. Um, so hopefully there'll be uh, there'll be plenty more. As I mentioned in previous episodes with the grey wings, I'm, uh, I'm going to just breed them. Uh, I'm going to keep breeding them. But what I will do is um, I'll drop the uh, a Norwich egg in as well, or a couple of Norwich eggs, uh, and I'll maybe move these under somewhere else. Um, I've got, you know, some five hens that are, that are sitting that, that aren't layings, but they're just incubating, so I've just popped eggs under them as well. So these guys are okay. The uh, It's a different story with the gats, actually, which is a little bit frustrating. The um, the pair up at the top here, they're on uh, four eggs that are due tomorrow, and they're full. Uh, I don't know whether they're going to hatch because of the, the cold snap that we've had, but I've just left a sitting. Um, this hen here has laid a few eggs and, and, and not sat them. Uh, she's a young hen. Uh, she's a 2020 hen. Um, she's been a bit up and down condition wise. So I don't know whether it, it sort of, you know, that constantly laying eggs is, is taking her out of her. Um, what, I, what I may well do with them is she's laying again at the moment. She's laid two eggs, so she's due a third egg tomorrow. If she shows no intention of sitting it this time, I might just split the pair up. Um, for the time being and uh, give, give her a couple of weeks you know make sure she's got plenty of calcium in her um, and uh, and try and get her back into some uh, into some real condition managed to catch some of the young uh, on out the nest uh, the grey wings certainly out the nest which is good um, and one of the things that I, you know I, I point out to you is, is is both the pans and the cage floor now um, different people have different methods uh, throughout the breeding season and um, what I do is I like to leave, although there are drawers in the cages, I like to leave the birds as undisturbed as possible. So I'll do a, a, a clear out. They had a deep clean before the start of the breeding season. I'll do a clear out of the, the bottom furniture before the young hatch. And then I'll pretty much leave it until the, uh, the young are due to spring the nest. And just before they're about to spring the nest, I'll clean it out. Uh, I'll clean the, the furniture of the cage out. It gets messed up. Um, I haven't, I'd normally change the pans and I haven't this time round. And the reason I haven't is um, I was uh, away doing stuff when it was the time to do it. Um, and the challenge can be if you do it too late, the young birds can spring the nest and you'll never get them back in. And then if they leave the nest too early, the hen can often not feed them and, and, and you get, a, you know, occasionally get chick mortality there. So I've just left them. Um, the, uh, not, a, not a great issue, really. But yeah, the birds are doing, um, the birds are doing well. And uh, I'm interested to see what they, they, they turn out like. And the grey wings, um, I can't tell. They, they are dimorphic, so it essentially means you can, you can sex them visually. Um, I, I can't tell what they are yet. If I was to be a betting man, I'd say of the six, I feel like I might have five cock birds and one hen. That would be sod's law, wouldn't it? Um, but we'll see. That's our new colour corner for this week. Let's hope the agats pick up a little bit uh, for future episodes. We've done Bird of the Week. We've done the Native Diaries. It can only mean it's question time. So it's, uh, it's time for question time now, as always. Thanks, everyone, for getting in touch with the show. Um, first question uh, is uh, it's from a good mate of mine, Ryan Wood, um, who has acquired some siskins uh, that have laid seven eggs. And he said, is that normal? Um, I'd like to say I know the answer to that. For definite, Ryan, um, my understanding is uh, siskins, clutches, 
on average are about four to six eggs. I know occasionally with, uh, certainly my experience with the poles, occasionally you'll get an extra one. Um, so I wouldn't suggest it was normal, uh, but I don't think it's particularly out of the ordinary. Best of luck with them, mate. Uh, I really hope that you um, that you get something from them. Um, and I'd, I'd be really interested to see them when you do. Um, Next message is from uh, Leonard, and this came in, Leonard, from uh, on our YouTube channel, um, which was uh, one thing I'd really appreciate is uh, if you could go through the whole ringing process again, both closed and open rings. I know you did this on an earlier episode, but there are a couple of points I'm a bit foggy with. Is there a preferred time of day you do yours? Do you remove the nest and chicks out of sight of the hen? What if the brood have not had a synchronized hatching? Uh, how long have I got? Um, with trembling fingers before I start panicking. Um, your advice very much appreciated. Um, the the thing to say with uh, with ringing Leonard is um, that uh, there is, I mean there is a video uh, up on the YouTube channel of how I ring the the birds with split rings. I'm not using split rings anymore. Um, the different birds are rung at different times at different days so for example with some of the native finches depending on how big the young grow then you know you're ringing them at four days five days um with the canaries um i'm generally ringing them around six seven eight days um so there is a very much a difference between the two now different birds have different ring sizes if you're keeping any native finches um, to sell them, they need to be IOA or BBC close rung, um, and there are different ring sizes for different birds. So check them out. So for for example, here, the you know the goldfinches are on a on a C size, the um, greenies are on an E size, the bullies are on a D size. The red poles are on a B size, um, and and what that means is the rings are different sizes. Trying to ring red poles is really difficult. Um, so the the principle, um, and I will do another video on this when I have some more birds to ring. The principle of the rings, and and Shane showed it brilliantly on his on his channel recently, is um, bird has essentially um, four toes. You have the front three facing forward and the back one facing backwards. And you thread the toes through the ring, push it over the knuckle, pull the back toe, pull it up to the leg so the back toe drops out uh, and then the bird is rung. What you have to be careful of, a couple of things. Firstly is, this year's ring colour is mauve or purple and that donates the ring colour and we follow um, a ring colour scheme. Uh, so last year was um, was green, the year before was black, this year is purple. So what we um, what you have to do is you have to keep an eye on the young when they're in the nest after you've rung them. Now with the native finches I always put a plaster around them so they don't look um, they look like the legs so they're, they're not um, they're not they don't look like rings because otherwise I'm always a little bit concerned that the head will throw them out. With the, uh, the canaries, I don't bother doing that. Um, what I have seen is hens pull the rings off the birds. Um, I've seen them pull the rings off the birds and you'll often find those rings discarded either on the cage floor or in the bottom of the nest pan. Um, you know, so you've got to keep an eye after you've rung them and, and, and do them again. Um, I ring them um, not out of shot of the hens. Uh, I've got a little setup um, which I'll show you in a future episode, Leonard. It's essentially uh, one of the uh, the nest pan holders um, attached to a show cage, and I put the nest pan in there and I pull the chicks out one by one. Um, I've got a little ring tidy, which we can see here. That keeps all of the different size rings in numerical order, and as I ring the birds and I often ring the birds last thing at night um, because I think that that gives them a chance you know the hen to sit on them um, and, and feed them before the um, before they are uh, ready to um, you know ready to go to bed so that's what I do with the clothes ringing it, it is difficult and I'm not going to pretend otherwise you know I found it hard this year particularly after my sort of increased shaky hands with Covid I found it hard to ring young uh, but just persevere and do it confidently. Just take your time. 
you, you'll be absolutely fine. Which comes on nicely to a, another question that came into the channel from Liz. Uh, thanks, Liz, for your question. Um, and Liz's question was... Um, around the use of rings. So I've described how we put rings on. Uh, I understand that clutch gets ringed, but I see many birds with different colors and some with a ring on each leg. Can you clarify and explain? So yeah, there's um, different color rings often notate the year and we run a cycle. I think it's a six year cycle. Now, one of the colors used to be orange. It's changed for next year to brown, but we have blue, we have red, we have green. Um, we have purple, we have black. Um, so every year is a different colour code and that follows um, the uh, a, a, a pattern and that, that's consistent across certainly across Europe and, and, and England. Um, so the colour often donates the year. Uh, sometimes it will have the year stamped on it as well. Often the ring will have a breeder code on so um, I've got two different breeder codes. I'm a member of the Fife Canary Council. I have a breeder code for those and I'm a member of the IOA and I have a different breeder code for those. So there are uh, different numbers on there, um, often on the rings. One signifies the year, one can signify the identify, uh, and identify the breeder and one can signify um, and identify the, the, the number of the birds. So when I'm keeping records, I write the numbers down of each bird of, and what pairing that it's come from. Um, in terms of, you know, left leg or right leg, it's absolutely at the discretion of the breeder. I uh, generally ring my birds on the right leg. Uh, I know some breeders alternate year by year, so one year they'll do right, one year they'll do left. Um, I just find it easier to do the right uh, the right leg. Liz, I hope that um, I hope that helps you, um, uh, and I hope that answers your questions. Anything else? Just don't hesitate to get in touch. Final question comes in from Dave, and it's around sort of egg food and soak seed, and soak seed in particular. You know, Matt, in the cold weather, how do you sprout your soak seed? Pretty good question, Dave. Um, you know, around about sort of 12, 13, 14 degrees, soak seed needs to start sprouting. So occasionally I'll take it into the house uh, and and because the house is nice and warm. Um, what I am doing now in, in the sort of the bright days, as you can see here, I've got a couple of um, pots of soak seed that are just on the side out in the garden in the sun. Uh, and they will... Um, they'll sprout nicely um, they really will and the final final question I did say that was the final one I got room for one more is um, came in from a, a, a good friend of mine um, who asked me about you know do you take the birds away at 21 days uh, the canary birds and the answer to the question quite simply is no you take birds away when you see them picking up and when you see them feeding and not just picking up and, and messing around, but consistently feeding themselves. As I mentioned earlier in the show, I use the pearl morbide for that because it's got moisture in it and they seem, it's a sort of fruity texture, they seem very keen to take it. So um, do not move them away until you have, um, you know, you, you've seen them picking up. Um, so that's it for question time. Uh, thanks everyone for getting in touch with the channel. Uh, we're nearly at the end of the show. As we, um, as we come to the end of the show, my thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we will be back on the road uh, in May. I've lined up a couple of visits already. I'm hoping to get some more in the calendar. Uh, so we will remain um, in the Canary Room. We'll probably come into the Canary Room once a month and, and alternate between different bird room visits. Uh, who knows, I might throw in a couple of additional bonus episodes. Um, just to keep the interest there. Uh, listen, thanks everyone for watching the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you've liked the video, like it and share it as well. Um, we are edging closer to 10,000 subscribers. In fact, hopefully when this airs, we'll be oh, a few away and I will do something special for that. Um, best of luck everyone in your breeding season. Until next time, take care.